Live in Las Vegas for a meeting of two of the Pac-12 powerhouses. The number one seed, the Arizona Wildcats, taking on the number four seed, the Oregon Ducks, in semifinal number one inside T-Mobile Arena. Jonah Prell on hand with Walker Smith bringing you the action. And Walker, it's all about the Arizona Wildcats. They dominated the number nine seed, the USC Trojans, to get to this point. It's gonna be an uphill battle for the Ducks. What do the Wildcats do so well? I mean, what number one thing you need to do in basketball is score. They averaged nearly 90 points a game. They blew out USC. They come into this game as 10th double-digit favorites. They just have to keep doing what they're doing, and that is score the basketball and just be big and out-muscle the other team. And then for Oregon, they had to grind their way to this semifinal matchup. And Dana Holtman, all he does is win in March. This is another win in the last 11 tournaments. They've at least won one game. And they had to do it the hard way against UCLA, a 68-66 win. What did you see out of them in that second half to pull away? I mean, it was just gritty from Oregon. Lower seed UCLA gave them all they could handle down the stretch. They were just able to make the shots that count, but it was a gritty win, a pretty average of scoring affair, but they went down and they did a really good job, led by Dante and Folly with 22 points in, in 33 minutes. He is going to be the key factor if they were to pull out this win today. Yeah, and they did it without their leading scorer, Jermaine Kuznard, really going off. Kuznard only had 10 points. As a team, they shot under 45%. UCLA had a chance to win it on the buzzer, but the runner fell short from Dylan Andrews. And so the Ducks arrived here facing an uphill battle as during the regular season, Arizona swept both matchups. And in the most recent one, they won by 20 in McHale. Jermaine Kuznard had a career high 39 points for Oregon. They shot it just under 67% from the field, but it wasn't enough. That just shows you how good Arizona is. I mean, Arizona can light it up against the best home, and you have to be able to keep up offensively if you want to beat this team. They're going to put up 70, sometimes 80, nearly 90 points a game. Oregon, they're going to have to get scoring from all over the starters and the bench if they want to keep up with Arizona. And we know how good offensively Arizona is, but they got it done on the defensive end against USC. A 70 to 49 victory, and that is the season low they've allowed for their opponents. It's the third fewest point total they've allowed in a Pac-12 tournament game ever. So they really took pride on the defensive end, and that added to another really interesting nugget under Tommy Lloyd as they lost the regular season finale against USC and they came back and won it. They are now 18 and 0 under Tommy Lloyd after a loss. I mean, what more can you say about Tommy Lloyd in his first three years at Arizona in the Pac-12 tournament? He has yet to lose. He's looking for his third straight Pac-12 tournament championship. He's 7 and 0 in the tournament and Oregon's the one standing in their way. And I wouldn't bet against them if it was me. They seem like a wagon in this tournament under Tommy Lloyd. And the Arizona faithful have come out in droves here in T-Mobile Arena, the lower bowl, filled in red. Let's give you the starting lineups on either side, starting with the number one seed, the Wildcats. In the guard spot, it's Caleb Love, the transfer from North Carolina, Pac-12 Player of the Year. Joining him as well is Pella Larson, the Utah transfer, the senior guard from Sweden as well as Kylan Boswell, the sophomore guard from Champaign, Illinois. In the front court, it's Keisha Johnson, the fifth year forward, transfer from San Diego State, and Umar Falo, the redshirt senior center from Mali. And then for the Oregon Ducks, in the point guard spot, it's Jackson Selstad, the freshman guard from Westland, Oregon. Joining him as well, Jermaine Kuznard, the redshirt senior guard from East Chicago, Illinois as well as Jadrian Tracy, the registered junior guard from Fort Myers, Florida. In the front court, it's Kwame Evans Jr., the freshman forward from Baltimore, Maryland. And then Fali Dante, the senior center from Bamako, Mali. Dante and Balo will meet in the center circle for the tip-off, and this is the matchup of big men. That's gonna be a key tonight. Yep, two of the best big men in the conference, Dante and Fali Dante. Leading Oregon in scoring. Follow one of the best big men, second on the team in scoring, averaging a double-double this season. That's the matchup to watch between these two teams. Which big man can dominate the paint better? It's tipped up and away, and Kylan Boswell controls it for the Wildcats. They'll move from our left to our right, and they're all white uniforms and red trim. Into the corner, it's Kylan Boswell. Up top, and they swing it around. Into the left corner, Keisha Johnson. 
Back up top to Boswell, gets the screen, driving on Shellstad, and it's blocked by Jackson Shellstad out of bounds. It's a good start defensively from Shellstad, just trailing the play, saw the shot go up and swatted it into the cheerleaders. They inbound it under the basket, Boswell looking, gets it into the corner to Caleb Love, the Pac-12 player of the year, drives inside, try to lob it up to Umar Balo, deflected, but they get it back. And Keisha Johnson tried out to outlet bounds. pass it to the Lock perimeter, but it went out of bounds, deflected off clock. of a duck, and we'll get a side out inbounds with three seconds on the shot clock. Good first defensive possession here from Oregon. They just haven't been able to come up with the ball after the good defense. Boswell lobs it over to the other side. Love an open three-pointer. No, short off the rim, and a rebound by Evans. Here's Shellstad quickly into the front court. Ducks in their all-green uniforms with yellow trim. Shellstad on the right wing. Up top to Jadrian Tracy. They get into the corner. Kuznard, a bounce pass into Infali Dante. Backing down Umar Balo, and a right-handed hook shot drops. 2-0 Oregon, first minute of action. I mean, Dante and Balo, they mirror each other very well, only an inch separating them. And they get it to Umar Balo, a pump fake, and Bali Dante flew over his back and a hard fall on the ground as Balo put it off the glass and in. Dante hit the floor hard, you're right. I mean, he flew exactly directly over Balo. Balo pumped his tailbone or his lower back really hard. Might have gotten the wind knocked out of him. A scary sight for sure. Dante, he's dealt with injuries in his entire career. He's had three knee, knee injuries and he missed time this season, two months exactly, with left knee surgery. So he's only played 17 games, but a second time all Pac-12 first teamer. So important to this team arguably the most important player on this team. I mean, he leads him in scoring, leads him in rebounding, leads him in field goal percentage, and he's still taking his time to get up. He will still need to get medical training staff attention. He's still on the ground, and we'll take a short break as they attend to him. We'll be right back on Blaze Radio. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest-growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze. After the hard fall from Infali Dante, quickly Dana Altman goes to his bench. Mohamedou Diawara, the fifth-year center, replaces him. 2-2, Wildcats and Ducks inside the second minute of action. Shellstad gets it over to Evans, almost deflected away, and Tracy gets it back. Defended by Larson, up top Diawara, looking on the right side, stop the dribble, and a handoff to Evans. Back up top, Shellstad. He calls for a screen. Diawara gives it to him in the left corner. It's Kuznard, a three ball, connects. 5-2 Oregon with 18-30 here in this first half. And now with Dante out of the game, it's going to fall to Kuznar to really carry the load scoring-wise. Pella Larson on the left wing, buries a triple. And we're all, all nodded back up at five apiece. Quickly, the Wildcats respond right there. Shellstad between the circles, trying to direct traffic. Over to Diawara on the right wing. Looking inside as he stopped the dribble and a handoff to Kuznard. Around the screen, Kuznard in the corner, driving. Lost his dribble, back out Shellstad. Four on the shot clock, puts it up, no good. Tipped around, it goes out of bounds and it'll go to the Wildcats. Now that Dante is no longer in the game, at least for the foreseeable future, we'll wait to see if we see him later. It's gonna fall to Kuznar and Shellstad to carry the offensive load. Both of them are the only other two players averaging over 10 points a game, so they're both going to be touching the ball in every possession and likely shooting it. 5-5 five, five the score, 17-30 to play. Here's Love around the screen, puts it up short, tipped it back to Balo, but he couldn't corral it. And here's JJ and Tracy from right to left. Tracy on the drive, inside, couldn't hit the layup. Ball goes out of bounds, and it'll stay with the Wildcats. Umar Balo disagrees, but they'll say it's off Balo. Yeah, so does everyone else in the arena. They can't really 
see it, but Mbalo might have gotten a hand in there. It's tough to see from our angle. Our officiating crew, Tony Padilla, Brooks Wells, and Deldre Carr, as Kwame Evans has it in the right corner, trying to drive on Larson. Back up top to Tracy, they swing it around. Shellstad has it. Goes left, down the alley, driving, puts it up, off the glass and in. Jackson nice move from Jackson Shellstad. He had 12 points yesterday on five of 10 shooting from the field. Here's really efficient shooter. Keyshaw Johnson hoists a three ball, short, rebound by Umar Balo, and Balo gets fouled. A reach in, it looks like, on Jadrian Tracy. Yeah, Tracy right there just can't get around Balo on the offensive box out. And Balo that just has three, so much one, side and Jackson, rebounds so Jackson, physically. Jackson, no wonder he's Jackson. averaging a double-double out there. He is just impossible to keep boxed out. First in the conference in offensive rebounds as Keisha Johnson has it on the left side. Back out Pella Larson. Pump fake to three ball. Now drives in the paint. Stop the dribble and back out to Kylan Boswell. Boswell stops, pulls up on the left elbow. All air. And a rebound by Tracy. Boswell had two points yesterday on one of eight shooting in their quarterfinal win over USC. Yeah, it was a really tough day for him. Didn't end up mattering, as he, but he's normally a really efficient scorer. He averages close to 10 a game for Arizona. Kuznard stops at the right elbow, puts it up, short off the rim, and a rebound by Balo. Here's Boswell quickly into the forecourt, and he stops at the top and over to Caleb Love. He rises for three off the side of the rim. Balo tried to get the rebound, and he couldn't corral it. Shellstad threw the ball off of him out of bounds, and will go to Oregon. And we, you and I just see the physicality from here. Kwame Evans Jr. has him boxed out, but Balo is so big, he's able to just do it without fouling, just kind of move Evans from behind, move him under the basket to where you can't get a rebound if you're directly under there. It's going to be a team effort for Oregon to take down the Wildcats on the rebounding affair as they are first in the conference in rebounds, second in the country. 7-5 Oregon leading, 16 minutes to go. Diawara, a handoff to Kuznard, gets the screen, probes in the paint, back out in the right corner, Evans rises for three, air ball, as he was too strong on it, ball goes out of bounds, and it'll go to the Wildcats. Timeout on the floor here with Oregon leading 7-5, 15-52 to play here in the first half. You're listening to the Pac-12 tournament on Blaze Radio. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest and the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppus like BTS, rappers like Jesse, and pop rock bands like The Rose? K-pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-pop on blazeradioonline.com on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. My name is Jasmine, and I'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing vs. Everyone. I'm Edward Neiman, host of Boxing vs. Everyone. Tune in Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com for the latest boxing analysis, news, updates, and more. Lights. Camera. Action. Whether you're a Broadway pro or a beginner. Join us for Broadway 101 every Monday at 12 p.m. to hear some musical hits. Anthony Scarmack and Anna Olp break down a new production every week with music from the stage and facts about the musical's origin and journey. Find us on blazeradioonline.com or our Instagram at Broadway 101 Radio to see what's happening in the wings for our next show. Do you get made fun of for your grandpa music taste? Do you shop vintage? Have you ever been called an old soul? Or maybe you just want some new artists to listen to. If so, check out our show. It's called Can You Dig It? The show where we talk old and new artists alike and the relationship between them. Tune in from 4.30 to 5. Welcome back inside T-Mobile Arena. Jonah Krell on hand with Walker Smith, Kevin Blader, our producer. It's a cloudy, rainy day here in Las Vegas, but we're hoping to bring you some sunshine inside T-Mobile Arena. 
And Oregon has got it done on the defensive end without Enfali Dante. Yeah, both teams playing well defensively, but neither can really score. UA hasn't scored in their last four attempts from the field, only shooting 22%, two of nine in the first four minutes of this ball game, while Oregon not doing too much better, only three of seven, but that's the difference right now. A really early feeling out process, and neither team's offense can get going early. Enfali Dante went out of the game early with an injury. They look to survive without the All-Pac-12 player. As a lob up to Paulo, he slams it down. The lob from Larson, 7-7, 15-30 here in the first half. He's just too big inside. Shell's got a handoff up top to Cario Quindo. Quindo on the right wing over to Kuznard. Kuznard right side of the circle. Gets the screen from Diora over on the left wing. Shellstad hoists a three ball, short, and a rebound tipped around. Follow had it in his grasp and it was poked free, and they'll call it a foul on, foul on Jadrian on Tracy. Tracy. Yeah, Jadrian Tracy was a little too reachy as he was trying to strip the ball from Balo as he brought Checking it down for the board. For the five, Ducks will have to stay out of foul trouble. That's something that they struggled with against UCLA as KJ Lewis checks into the game for Pella Larson. He's on the right side of the circle. They swing it around. Keisha Johnson gives it off to Umar Balo. KJ Lewis gets a screen from Balo at the top. Lewis, a bounce pass to Love on the right corner. A bounce inside. Can't be feasting for this entire 40-minute contest. He gives the Wildcats a 9-7 lead as he's set to go at the free throw line where he struggled on the season. And he hits the back rim and missed it. Wildcats leading by two here, under 15 minutes to play. Kwame Evans has it straight away with the Oregon Ducks on a two minute plus scoring drought. Shellstead has it on the left side, gets the screen, works it around. Tracy, a right wing three, no good. And a rebound by Balo. He is just a man amongst boys inside. Kylan Basel has it in the front court. Over on the left side, KJ Lewis. He gets a screen from Balo in the paint. Ducks his head, puts it back out to Boswell. Boswell calling for a screen, gets it from Paulo, stops a deep two, and it's good. That's good for Boswell to see one go down. He had a really rough day yesterday, as you mentioned, but with that shot, Arizona's looking to get going now. They lead it by four, and the Wildcats are on their feet. A 6-0 run. Shellstad around the screen, trying to probe, and he backs it back out on the perimeter. Kuznard now on the left side. Evans, they're just swinging around. Right wing, Kuznard off the side of the rim. No good. A wild miss for the Ducks. Their scoring drought continues. And Folly Dante comes back from the locker room. Over to the bench as KJ Lewis, a three ball on the left side, all air. And here's KJ and Tracy. They get into the front court. Oregon trying to push. Kuznard the drive inside and a foul on the floor. Yeah, you mentioned Folly Dante walking Lewis, across the court, waiting to see checking if he'll be able to check zero. back into this game. We'll let you know when he, if he comes to the scorer's table as Kylan Boswell checks out. Jake Bradley comes in for Boswell. Jake. Oregon, the inbound here under the basket. They get it in to Evans. He puts it off the glass and in over the smaller Boy, Caleb Love. And it breaks the three-minute scoring drought. 11 to nine, Wildcats leading, 13 minutes to play, first half. Caleb Love has it on the right side. Love still scoreless, he lobs it in to Keisha Johnson in the corner. A bounce under the basket, Balo, and he puts it off the glass and in. Umar Balo is strong, and here's a fast break. Kuznard kicks it back out, Shellstad with it. Balo now with eight points. Shellstad back out to Evans, he'll fire three, in and out. Tapped around and Tracy grabs the offensive rebound over Balo inside on a cutting Evans and he puts it off the glass and in. Nice move from Kwame Evans on the cut. Really great finish too with the left hand. Love a three ball, banks it in. Quickly the Wildcats respond in transition. 16 to 11, Arizona. That's already his second three of the day. He hit three triples in the game yesterday. He is a sharp shooter. They lead it by five, 12 20 to play first half. Evans gets it over to Shellstad on the left wing, gets the screen, stops mid range jumper, no good, but he got fouled in the air. 
Yeah, it looks like the defender just kind of hit the wrist of Shellstad uh -huh. as he Five went up, so he'll be at the line. KJ First free throws of the day for the Oregon Ducks, but Umar Balo, I mean, since Dante left this game, he's been the main man. He's got eight points, four for four shooting, and has gotten five rebounds in only eight mi less than eight minutes on the court. They have made it a concerted effort to get it to the big man. Shellstad hits the first free throw, and some substitutions on either side. Brennan Rigsby checks in for Oregon, as well as Pella Larson and Monteus Crevas for the Wildcats. Shellstad about as sure of a thing as you can get in college basketball at the free throw line. Shoots 84% from the stripe. Ducks down by four here. Shellstad rises up and hits the second free throw to bring it to a three-point deficit. 12-12 to play here first half. The Wildcats are sizzling on offense. Five of six from the field. Five of six on their last field goals. Love on the drive. Krivas inside. Put it up. A whistle. And I don't Wild think they called the foul. Ball. ball went out of bounds there. Yeah, they called it tipped by an Oregon player. Krivas brought it down right before he was about to go up. And uh, got it tripped out of bounds. They'll keep it. They get it in. Love thought about a three on the right wing and backs it out. Into the post with Krivas. Krivas backing down Evans in the paint. Left-handed hook. Off the rim, no good. But a long rebound tapped out. Bradley in the paint. He puts it in. It rattles home. 18-13, Wildcats leading. Oquindo has it. In the corner, Rigsby. Back over to Oquindo on the left wing. Trying to probe. And over to Shellstad. Defended by the long and lengthy Keisha Johnson. 15 on the shot clock. Shellstad trying to work. Stops the mid-range jumper, and he was blocked. Wildcats quickly the other way, and we'll get a foul. Yeah, I, think they're, gonna I think they're gonna catch Rigsby with the hold in transition. Johnson with the block right there. 18-13, Wildcats on top here. 11-23 to play. Timeout on the floor. We'll be right back on Blaze Radio. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest and the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop, a show featuring trending K-Pop songs with prominent artists like BTS, rappers like Jessie, and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-Pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-Pop on blazeradioonline.com on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. My name is Jasmine, and I'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing vs. Everyone. I'm Edward Neiman, host of Boxing vs. Everyone. Tune in Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com for the latest boxing analysis, news, updates, and more. Lights. 101 every Monday at 12 p.m. to hear some musical hits. Anthony Scarmack and Anna Olp break down a new production every week with music from the stage and facts about the musical's origin and journey. Find us on blazeradioonline.com or our Instagram at Broadway 101 Radio to see what's happening in the wings for our next show. Do you get made fun of for your grandpa music taste? Do you shop vintage? Have you ever been called an old soul? Or maybe you just want some new artists to listen to. If so, check out our show. It's called Can You Dig It? The show where we talk old and new artists alike and the relationship between them. Tune in from 4.30 to 5 every Thursday on... Catch David Blaine's Impossible at the win loss. Welcome back inside T-Mobile Arena where the Wildcats have an 18-13 lead with 11.23 to play here in the first half. Jonah Crell alongside Walker Smith. The Wildcats have hit six of their last eight from the field, and Oregon just trying to hang in, just trying to hang in there without Infali Dante, their star big man. Yeah, and during the break, Dante went back to the locker room over to our right, so we're not sure if he's going to be back. As it looks like Oregon comes out in his zone trap, 
And they're going to foul Boswell in the backcourt. It's going to be two quick Keep fouls on, on Brennan Rigsby. Rigsby coming in off the bench. The Ducks already are only eight men deep with all the injuries that they've had this season. They inbounded to Bradley in the front court. Crevis has it on the wing. Up top, Larson. Oregon still in his own here. Caleb Love stopped the dribble on the left side over to Bradley. Bradley working in the paint, stopped the dribble. A foul is called and an offensive foul. Gonna be, I think they're going to call it on Crevis. They're going to say he was a little too aggressive down in the paint, sealing out. So that'll be a turnover on Arizona. And give Oregon credit up to this point. Without arguably your best player, you're only down five to Arizona, playing some stellar defense, just not a whole lot of offense. Shostad has it. Now Evans at the top of the key. Evans looking inside. Now drives on Crevis down the left side. Had it stripped. Evans gets it back and back out to Kuznard on the left wing. 12 on the shot clock. Kuznard trying to work inside. A floater off the side of the rim. And Boswell goes up high and gets it. Wildcats in transition. Bradley the drive inside. Hangs, puts it off the glass. No good. Rebound by Rigsby. Trying to go over the long and lengthy Kwame Evans Jr. right there. Now Rigsby the drive inside. Lost the ball on a spin move. Out of bounds. And it'll go to the Wildcats. Still leading 18-13 here with 10-21 to play in the first half. Oregon just cannot buy anything on the offensive end. They've only made two of their last 10 shots from the floor. Caleb Love in the left corner. Now works his way over to the right side. Gets the screen from Kriva. Surges in the paint. Puts it off the window. No good. But he got fouled. Another foul by Oregon. Oregon That's now their fifth Wally as a team. Junior. It's going to go on Evans. Yeah, they only got one more foul to give before Arizona's going to be shooting free throws the rest of the way in this half. And that's really tough. You can't afford to be giving Arizona three points the at the free throw shoot, line shoot. unless you're intentionally fouling Balo down low. Love now gets set to go for his first free throw. And it's off the back rim. He missed it. Caleb Love leads the team 87.2% from the line. So an uncharacteristic miss. By the way, Oregon, they struggled with foul trouble yesterday. They had 20 fouls as a team against UCLA. Love missed the second free throw, an offensive rebound. Larson in the corner, it rattles in. A three ball from Pella, and it's an eight point lead for the Wildcats. Larson, he sometimes isn't always in the stat sheet, but he is a fantastic shooter. Evans defended by Kriva straight away, looking from left to right. Now trying to find the man. It's tipped as he was trying to pass it to Rigsby out of, out of bounds and will stay with Oregon. I mean, it just doesn't look, it doesn't look like Oregon can even find a good action on the offensive end. It's just passing around. They try and probe and penetrate, but without your big man and Dante in there, there's just no way to penetrate this Arizona defense, especially with the trees like Krivas and Balo inside. Tracy dribbling on the right wing. And he tried an entry pass to Kuznard. It was kicked out of bounds by Montieus Crevis. So the Ducks will hold onto the ball. They just cannot get anything inside. Mm -mm. And credit also Arizona. They have some really quick hands on defense. We saw it yesterday against USC. We're seeing it again today. Just showing your hands, clogging passing lanes. It's that simple. Tracy has it right side. Defended by Crevis. Thought about a three. Now inside Kuznard. And Love gets called for a foul. Try to get inside the passing Arizona zone right there. Two from Arizona, Caleb Love, first personal, 14. That's his first personal, so nothing to worry about for Caleb Love, but he will check out of the game. Kishad Johnson brings, comes Kishon back in. Johnson, Johnson back Love. in. The Ducks will inbound under the basket. With Evans, lobs it into Tracy. Tracy on the right wing, drives on Larson, hop into Lang, tried to throw up a wild shot, but came up empty. Larson the other way, a five on four. Larson inside to Crevis. Crevis in the paint, backing down Kuznard, tried to put up a shot, no good, but he was fouled. Another foul by Oregon, and now Arizona is in the bonus. Yeah, Crevis, when you have someone who's 7 2 coming off the bench, it's Really a great advantage for Tommy Lloyd's team, Krivas. He doesn't score a whole lot, but you see him enough when he comes in relief for Balo, scores just under six points a game. 
really good role player and a really good defender. That foul was on Cario Quindo as Crevis gets set to go. First free throw is good. And for a big man, Crevis, the freshman center from Lithuania, he shoots it pretty well from the charity stripe, 77%. He also shoots it pretty efficiently from the floor, over 50% on in his field goal percentage. He just doesn't shoot it all that often, but when he does, it normally goes in. His second free throw is also good. A 10-point lead for the Wildcats. Nine minutes to play in the first half. 23-13. Shellstad on the far side, defended by Bradley. A bounce pass to Tracy at the top. Defended by Crevis. Tracy bashes inside, stops the dribble, turns. A bounce pass to Tracy, knocked away. And Love running the other way. It's Larson. Larson on the right block. And he was picked away by Rigsby. He just stole it right out of his hands. Rigsby has it at the top. A drive inside. Kick out on the right side. Tracy in back up top to Shellstad. On the left wing now, Oquindo defended by Johnson. They work it around on the perimeter. Back to Rigsby on the right side. Everything on the arc for Oregon. Tracy has to fire it away. Eight on the shot clock. Stop the dribble. Inside a pass. Stolen away. Johnson running up ahead. In the lane. Lost the ball. Ball is loose on the ground. Crevis gets it back. Over in the left wing, Boswell. A bounce pass into Crevis on the left block. Spins, turns, shoots, and it rattles in. Mo Crevis off the bench, producing for the Wildcats. 25-13 Arizona, eight minutes to go. Oregon just can't hold on to the ball. They have four turnovers in the past four minutes. Still two of 10. They just cannot do anything on the offensive side. Tracy on the right wing, defended by Crevis. He'll drive, kicks it back out. Rigsby now over to Shellstad, high on the left wing. Rigsby back on the right side, up top to Shellstad. Shellstad a fire, a deep three-pointer as the clock expired. All air and out of bounds. The defense is swarming for the Wildcats. No gaps. And Arizona leads it 25-13 as we head to an under eight media timeout. Here from T-Mobile Arena, you're listening to the Pac-12 Tournament on Blaze Radio. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop, a show featuring trending K-Pop songs with prominent artists like BTS, rappers like Jessie, and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-Pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-Pop on blazeradioonline.com on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. My name is Jasmine, and I'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing vs. Everyone. I'm Edward Neiman, host of Boxing vs. Everyone. Tune in Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com for the latest boxing analysis, news, updates, and more. Lights, camera, action. Whether you're a Broadway pro or a beginner, join us for Broadway 101 every Monday at 12 p.m. to hear some musical hits. Anthony Scarmack and Anna Olp break down a new production every week with music from the stage and facts about the music. It's been a four minute, 29 second scoring drought for the Oregon Ducks as the Arizona Wildcats lead it 25 to 13 with 7.41 to play here in the first half. Arizona on a 9-0 run. And Walker, you can just feel in Folly Dante without him, they have struggled, but it looks like Dante is back on the floor after suffering an early injury. They need him offensively and defensively. Yeah, checking in out of the media timeout. We'll see how effective he's going to be, especially against the physicality of Umar Palo. But that is really important for him to come back in the game and try and stop this bleeding and generate some offense for the Ducks. 
really just have been ineffective all over the court. They have four turnovers in this game. Credit Arizona, who's stolen the ball three times. But they're five for 16 from the field, only one for eight from downtown. The Ducks going with a bigger lineup with Dante, Evans, Shellstad, Rigsby, and Kuznard. Bradley gets it across the timeline, defended by Shellstad. Oregon in a zone here. Bradley trying to work on top. Larson gets a screen from Ballo, lobs it inside, but it was deflected away. Shellstad running the other way. Rigsby in the corner, thought about it. Now inside of Dante, backing down Umar Ballo, trying to battle for space. Pivots and back up top to Shellstad. Great defense by Ballo. Shellstad around the screen, kick it out. Left corner three, Rigsby no good. Short, and the scoring drought continues, nearing five minutes for Oregon. Johnson has it at the top of the arc, over on the right wing to Kylan Boswell. Boswell, bounce pass inside. Ballo lays it off the glass and in with the left hand. 27-13, Arizona leading with 6.45 to play in yeah, the first Ballo, half. Ballo just able to put his shoulder right into Dante and spin around him. Not a swim move if you keep the arm down. Ballo now with 10 points in the game. Kuznard has it on the left wing. Bounces it inside to Dante. Dante spins around Ballo, right-handed hook off the side of the rim, but a foul. Foul on Ballo. It's only his first personal, so nothing to worry about, but that's what Dante can bring you. It can bring you that presence inside that you're not afraid to give the ball to and try and generate some offense. Either he's able to get up and go get fouled, put up a shot, or he's able to, excuse me, draw the defense in, crash and kick out to your shooters and get some better looks. Dante at the line, misses the first free throw. Shoots it at 59% from the charity stripe. Caleb Love checks back into the game for Jaden Bradley. Dante rises up, second free throw drops in. That's yeah, a common theme here between these two big men. Both of them shoot it at right about 50%. Arizona leading 27 to 14, nearing six minutes to play in the first half. Larson has a at the top, a 2-3 zone for Oregon. Larson on the drive, drops it off to Ballo, couldn't handle it, ball is loose on the ground. Dante dives and gives it off to Shellstad. And Dante is slow, hobbling as he works his way into the front court. Yeah, he is visibly in pain when he goes down to the ground and gets up, wincing down the court, really gutting out this first half. Shellstad working on the perimeter, defended by Boswell. And he finds Kuznard at the top of the arc. Kuznard on the drive, down the right side. Lost the ball on the way up, out of bounds, and will stay with Oregon. No driving lanes for Jermaine Kuznard. He's got three points on one of four shooting so far. Yeah, the combined backcourt here so far hasn't been good between Shellstad and Kuznard. They're only two for nine in this first half. Kuznard trying to get it in. He gets it to Dante, a right-handed hook, short off the rim, and a rebound by Ballo. Boswell from left to right, tried a bounce pass to Keisha Johnson entering the paint and it was stolen away by Evans. Here's Shellstad on the breakaway. Drives straight past Ballo, a finger roll no good, but Dante slams it in with the putback. Folly Dante finally, it's their first field goal in the past seven and a half minutes, Jonah. They desperately needed that. 27 to 16, 520 to go, first half. Larson has it on the left side, into Johnson at the top. Johnson trying to enter it into Ballo once again. Now Love, Love probing in, inside, lobbed it up, deflected away, and Rigsby comes away with it for Oregon. Rigsby from right to left, finds Kuznard on the left wing, hoists a three, no good. Rebound by Ballo. Another miss for Kuznard. Boswell on the right side, gets the screen from Umar, hangs, puts it off the glass, no good, but he got fouled. A good reset here for Arizona. They've kind of started to slow down a little bit themselves. They haven't scored a point in the past two minutes and have turned the ball over four times in the past three and a half. Seems like that little bit of fire they had earlier in this first half kind of has burned out a little bit, especially as Dante's come back into the game and been able to be a little more physical down low. Boswell getting set to go for his first free throw. And it goes in. Substitutions for Oregon. Cario Quindo and Jadrian Tracy check in for Kuznard and Evans. Kylan Boswell now with three points. 
and already surpasses his total in the quarterfinal matchup against USC with two points. He's had an up and down season. He's trying to make an impact here as he hits both free throws. A 13 point lead for the Wildcats. Shellstad brings it in from right to left. Oregon trying to make a run late in this first half. Oquindo has it at the top of the arc, a handoff to Rigsby, back to Shellstad on the left wing. He's closely guarded by Boswell, gets the screen, kicks it over to Oquindo, down the right side, drives, puts it off the glass, no good, but a foul on the floor. Yeah, I think they're gonna get Caleb Love for his second foul as he kinda hip-checked Kuznard on his way to the basket. That was the last foul to give for Arizona, so for these last four and a half minutes, Oregon's gonna be shooting free throws. So Love in some foul trouble here with two fouls, and. Bradley comes back into the game. That was the last foul to give, so one more in Oregon's and in the, in the bonus. As they get it in bounds over on the far side of the court in the backcourt to Rigsby. That just shows you how much Balo has with those long arms, his impact on those inbounds. Mm -hmm. Rigsby gets a screen from Dante, probes inside, stops, lost his footing, and he traveled. Yeah, it looks like Rigsby. Rigsby, his right leg almost buckled a little bit as he tried to pivot, might have slipped a little bit on a wet spot in the paint, just an unlucky turnover by him. A 13 point lead nearing four minutes to go. Bradley gets it into the front court for the Wildcats, a handoff to Larson. Larson stops at the right elbow, bounces it in to Bradley, back up top to Larson, and Bradley gets the ball back. In the paint, kicks it back out to Boswell. Boswell with 10 on the shot clock. Defended by Oquindo, slashes down the left side, stops the dribble, back out Larson, five on the shot clock, gets a screen, steps through, hangs, puts it off the rim, no good. And another foul, this time on the floor. They're gonna get, it looks like they're gonna get Brendan Rigsby down low for the foul. So another foul, Arizona's gonna go to the line when we come back, but an under four media timeout, 29 to 16, Arizona leading here on Blaze Radio. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest and the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop, a show featuring trending K-Pop songs with prominent artists like BTS, rappers like Jessie, and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-Pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-Pop on blazeradioonline.com on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. My name is Jasmine, and I'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing Cam for the latest boxing analysis, news, updates, and more. Lights, camera, action. Whether you're a Broadway pro or a beginner, Join us for Broadway 101 every Monday at 12 p.m. to hear some musical hits. Anthony Scarmack and Anna Olp break down a new production every week with music from the stage and facts about the musical's origin and journey. Back inside T-Mobile Arena for the final three minutes and 47 seconds of the first half. Jonah Krell on hand with Walker Smith. A 29 to 16 lead for the Wildcats. They're on a scoring drought of no field goals in their last three minutes and five seconds in this one. They'll try to get organized here. Walker, the game has slowed down a lot with foul trouble on either side. Yeah, they're probably going to see a whole lot of free throws in these last four minutes. Excuse me, these, yeah, these last just under four minutes. And both off in line to try and extend the lead. Arizona, they should see they're four points shy of that here in this first half. But for a team that averages nearly 90 points a game, it's not what you come to expect from the Cats. Follow to the line now, leading the way with 10 points and seven rebounds, nearing another double-double. He bends the knees, fires on the one and one, and he hits it. Good sight to see for Ballo. 
who was just four of 10 from the free throw line yesterday against USC. He still finished with 10 points and 13 rebounds, his 17th double-double this season. Follow, ready to go, second one, off the back rim and a rebound by Dante. 30 to 16, Wildcats leading, 340 to play as Shellstad brings it into the front court over to Tracy. He couldn't handle the pass, it goes out of bounds. Out of bounds a sloppy Arizona. mistake and it goes back to Arizona. Oregon is just snake fit. I mean, that is just an uncharacteristic mistake. You have a couple of turnovers like that. You have Rigsby down in the paint, just sliding a little bit as he tries to pivot something he really didn't have any control over. And now you have Tracy just losing the ball on a routine chess pass in the backcourt. Previs checks in for Ballo. Bradley has it at the top of the arc. Now over to Larson. Gets a screen from Previs on the right side. Back to Bradley. Up top to Larson. Larson drives down the right side. Stop the dribble. A couple pump fakes. Over to Previs on the left block. Previs blocked as he was trying to go up on Dante. And here's Oregon. Kuznard from right to left. Kuznard gets a screen from Dante. Probes in the paint. Hangs. Drops it off to Dante. And he flushes it down with two hands. Dante. Folly Dante now with seven points in just six minutes leading the way for Oregon. And these are big minutes for Dante as he has the matchup against Crevis with Ballo out of the game. Boswell rises for three, short, but a rebound by Larson. He lobs it into Crevis. Crevis puts it up, but he was blocked from behind. That was again Dante. It's a second straight possession. He's blocked Crevis. 30 to 18, Wildcats leading, 240 to play, first half. Shostad walking across near the half court line as the Ducks trying to set up their offense. The Ducks have to take advantage of this last two and a half minutes with Ballo not in the game, Arizona struggling on offense. They have to get some points and cut this to at least 10 point lead. Three on the shot clock, Kuznard in the corner, rises off the side of the backboard, no good. Fast break for the Wildcats. Johnson drives inside, rose up, lost the ball on the way up, and he got fouled. Oh, I don't know about that one. That looks like a clean strip to me. Three they call it on Shellstad. I've had to see the replay again, but it looked like he got Second all ball. But that'll put Johnson back at the free throw line for the team's ninth foul. So after this, the next two minutes, Arizona's going to be shooting two free throws on every foul as Krivas gets checked out. Balo re enters. Johnson to the line. He's scoreless so far, and he can't hit the front end of the one and one. Rebound by Shellstad with 2.11 to play in the first half. Up top to Tracy. Tracy looking from left to right, now gets it straight away to Dante. Dante dribbling towards his right side, looking for a handoff, and now bounces it into Tracy on the left block. A kick, left corner three, Kuznard no good. That was a quindo actually, and a rebound by Boswell. Bradley now went falling to the ground. That's another tough Fouls call on Shellstad, three, and that's his third. Jackson, two Shelstad. quick fouls in the past two possessions. Shellstad might be relegated. Just cannot get anything going on either Brandon side of the Devon floor. It combined shooting. two for 12. As well, the entire offense is one for 11 from beyond the arc. 29% from the field Back as Bradley hits down. the first free throw. Brandon so they're now in the double speed. bonus here. One Jackson, minute, 47 Shelstad. seconds left. As Shellstad goes to the bench, in comes Brennan Rigsby, the junior guard from Dubuque, Colorado. I mean, it was one of our keys coming into this one, wasn't it, Jonah, about how Oregon, if they want to win, they have to be able to keep the pace with Arizona. And while Arizona not scoring very quickly in this game, they only have 32 points, which is below average for them. Oregon, they just can't even keep up with that. Bradley hits both free throws, 32 to 18, Wildcats leading, a minute 36 to play. Tracy has him in the left corner, up top to Oquindo. Into the right side, Rigsby rises, no good on the three ball. Rebound Johnson. Another miss from three. They're now one of 12 from deep. Larson driving, battle for the ball. Rigsby trying to snatch it away. No and it's a jump ball. Good job by Rigsby. And the possession arrow goes to the Ducks. They'll take it. I mean, this crowd is, feels how cold it is in the gym too. They are completely silent as neither of these teams can get anything going. Both teams struggling, Oregon with six turnovers, Arizona with four, excuse me, with seven turnovers, and haven't, haven't shot a field goal in the past five minutes. Kuznard slithers inside, puts up the floater, and it drops. And finally, Oregon hits a bucket. They're now down by 12 with a minute to go. 
Boswell has it between the circles. On the right side, Larson bounces it into the corner. Johnson defended by Dante. Back up to the point with Boswell. Guarded by Kuznard, calling for a screen from Ballo. Now drives down the left side, kick it back up top. Johnson, a three ball, no good. It rolled around the rim. And a rebound by Kuznard with 35 seconds to go in the first half. Kuznard probing in the paint, puts up another floater, and it goes off the glass and in. It brings the deficit to 10 points now. You must have heard me talking about him. He's made the last two buckets for Oregon, cut it to 10, which is a good spot to be considering how bad this half has gone. And Arizona's going to take a timeout to set up this last possession. 20 seconds to go. They lead it 32-22. 30 second timeout. A 30 Arizona. second timeout by Tommy Lloyd. So we'll stay right here. Jermaine Kuznard now with seven points on three of eight shooting. Kuznard in the last game really struggled from the field walker. He went three of 16 with 10 points. That was his lowest point total since scoring five points in February against Stanford. They really need him, the all Pac-12 second teamer. Yeah, and against other teams in this conference, that probably isn't good enough to get it done, but UCLA struggles offensively most of the year, and they got bailed out also by Infali Dante with 22 points in that game. But today, they needed offense from all of their good players, Shellstat, Kuznar, Dante. None of them have been too effective offensively. Give a little bit of credit to Dante for gutting out the rest of this half after missing Basically the first 10, 12 minutes of the first half due to a back injury after hitting the floor really most of the time. 2-3 zone. Boswell looking, trying to end a big scoring drought. Over their last five from the field. Larson inside to Johnson. He scoops it up. No good, but fouled by Dante. That is the 11th team Foul's foul by Oregon. Oregon one Luckily, Dante. Dante not in any first foul trouble. Personal. That's only his first personal. But with these free throws, it'll be two shots. Oregon, unless they aren't able to get the rebound, will at least have a shot at the end of the half after the foul. But it is also a tough foul to give up right Johnson at the end of the, the clock. Arizona leading 32-22, 7.8 seconds left here in the first half. Keisha Johnson, first free throw up and good. Johnson been a starter most of the year. He's been quiet today. That's only his first point in the entire game. He's 0 for 2 from the field, both of which have been three-point shots. And also missed a free throw prior to this as well. He was quiet yesterday, only had five points on two of three shooting. Here's the second one. It floats off the rim, no good. Rebound by Dante, trying to bring it up into the fourth court. Three seconds to play. Dante drives inside. A finger roll, no good, but a foul on Johnson. Hope the back isn't bothering him on that one. He loses the handle in the backcourt a little oh, bit. Looks up at the clock and is like, okay, I'm just going to play like a guard and go coast to coast off the rebound and drive into the paint and force the foul with about 1.9 remaining. See if he can knock down a couple of these free throws. If he makes both of them, it's a three-possession game, which Oregon will take after a rough first half like it's been for them. Dante's first one is good. How about the speed from the big fella? Really getting up the floor in mm -hmm. quick time. And he drew the foul on Johnson. Dante, second one no good. It's tipped around and out of bounds. With uh, 28 seconds left in the ball. first half, it will stay with the Ducks. And Balo, Balo will come in off the bench. Yeah, Balo, you talked, you said it, you mentioned it earlier in this broadcast. He's so tough to get by on the inbound. But with 0.8 seconds, Oregon's going to, looks like they're going to take a timeout and draw something up cut this lead to single digits with 0.8. They'll have time for an inbound and just a straight shot, not even time for a dribble. If you're Oregon here with Dante back in, he looks like he's pretty agile as we just saw on that last play. Maybe you see if you can lob one up to him from under the basket. Maybe he can make something happen or maybe get a cutter, Kuznard or Shellstad to get a mid-range jump shot or a jump shot somewhere. You don't have a whole lot of time for too much. Yeah, only Point eight on the clock. Dante leading the way for Oregon with eight points in just nine minutes, three of four from the field. Jermaine Cousinard also has seven points for the Ducks. Arizona, they're being led by their big man, Umar Balo, with 11 points and eight rebounds. And really, since Dante's come back in the game, Balo hasn't been as effective. They haven't been beating him down low inside while Dante was out. He had 10 points in a majority of his boards. 
since then, he's missed a little bit of time. He's been on the bench. Krivas came in, didn't do a whole lot off the bench from him, but Balo has been pretty quiet these last six or seven minutes with Dante in the game, and that is just how important he is to this team. We said at the top of the broadcast, that's the matchup to watch. So Oregon and Arizona getting set to go for the final nine tenths. They put a tenth of a second back on the clock. Kuznar to inbound. They'll try to get a lob play. Tony Padilla hands it off to Kuznard, and here's Oregon. Kuznard lobs it up, Dante, but the pass was off target, and that's the end of the and first half. The first half the Arizona leads it 33-23 going into the break. They got off to a hot start, hot start, Walker, and Oregon, you got to hand it to them, able to claw their way back into this one, and only down 10. I mean, only down 10 after the poor shooting performance they just had. They should count themselves lucky. They shot 8% from downtown in that first half, but Arizona, they just went cold down the stretch. They didn't score a bucket for the last seven minutes of that first half. Wow. Yeah, that says something about the Oregon defense. They stepped up towards the end, and they'll go into the break down by 10. As we set it into halftime, Arizona leads it 33-23. Walker Smith will have you covered the rest of the way when we come back. You're listening to the Pac-12 Tournament on Blaze Radio. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing with growth in the game each and every day. You don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop. K-Pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-Pop on blazeradioonline.com on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. My name is Jasmine, and I'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing vs. Everyone. I'm Edward Neiman, host of Boxing vs. Everyone. Tune in Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com for the latest boxing analysis, news, updates, and more. Lights, camera, action. Whether you're a Broadway pro or a beginner, join us for Broadway 101 every Monday at 12 p.m. to hear some musical hits. Anthony Scarmack and Anna Olp break down a new production every week with music from the stage and facts about the musical's origin and journey. Find us on blazeradioonline.com or our Instagram at broadway101radio to see what's happening in the wings for our next show. Do you get made fun of for your grandpa music taste? Do you shop vintage? Have you ever been called an old soul? Or maybe you just want some new artists to listen to. If so, check out our show. It's called Can You Dig It? The show where we talk old and new artists alike and the relationship between them. Tune in from 4.30 to 5 every Thursday on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com where Where we we ask ask the question, question, can you dig it? Have you ever wondered about the meaning behind a song or album? Do you want to learn more about genres, movements, or figures in the world of music? If your answer is yes, then Culture Club is the show for you. From the new romantic movement of the 80s to indies music of the 2010s, we try to cover it all. Every Tuesday at 4 p.m., your hosts, Ayana Porter and I, Merlin Porter, highlight songs and artists while giving you all the cool background infos we can find. So come check out the show, Culture Club, every Tuesday at 4 p.m. on blazeradioonline.com. Diamond in the Rough, ASU's only baseball and golf sports show. Hosted by Ethan Briggs and Evan Reiser every Monday at 3.30. We will talk about all news in golf, baseball, and life in general on Blaze Radio, blazeradioonline.com. The rock is still alive every time I rhyme. Forever, ever, forever, ever, 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 ever. 
To flop or not to flop, that is the question. Ask not by Shakespeare, but by me, Selma Krantz, the host of Flop Star here on Blaze Radio. The show is back and better than ever this semester. With an hour of yapping, you're sure to be in the know about all the bops and flops of the world. Tune in Wednesdays from 1230 to 130 Arizona time on blazeradioonline.com to hear the latest and greatest of pop culture and news commentary. Just the music show on Mondays from 11 to 12. A show about sampling. Hosted by a city boy named Shane Saya. Talking about free samples. Coming this spring. The show of a generation. Get up, Rock. Get up so you can watch Friday Night Lights camera action on Fraction. The pageantry. There ain't gonna be a next time, Jackie. Maybe someday we'll all tune into Friday Night Lights camera action. The emotion. I can't do nothing else but listen to Friday Night Lights camera action. Starring Parker Perel and Ethan Neal. Friday Night Lights camera action. Only on Blaze Radio. So, so go, go out there and take it. This is what I wanted. This is what I've been waiting for. For these cars to come off of this corner, and guys, it's showtime! Boogity, boogity, boogity! Ooh, let's go racing today, boys! Are you a racing fan or want to learn more about the sport? Join Cooper Burns, Henry Dominey, and Eric List every Thursday afternoon from 2 to 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on Blaze Radio as they discuss all things NASCAR, F1, dirt racing, and more on Fuel for Thought. <laughs> Hey man, did you bring the... No, but I brought the... Oh, well we can use the... Hey, has anyone seen my... Guys, what happened to the... Have you also been wondering where your nondescript dubstep noises keep disappearing to? Our team at Hot FM will treat your music with the love and care that you deserve. We service all kinds of electronic music, including but not limited to house, jungle core, breakbeat, hardcore, and dubstep, and rhythm, line, drum, Stop by every Friday at noon for the freshest beats and the hardest hitters, only on Blaze Radio. That sound will be here before we know it when the NCAA men's basketball season comes to a close at the Final Four right here in the Valley. What better way to get you ready than by listening to Heat Check, Blaze Radio's premier destination for college basketball. Tune in to Riley, Scott, Cavett, and Ryan each Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m. on blazeradioonline.com. If you're a tennis fan and want to take a little break from your day, I'm serving up a show for you. This is your host, Pratam Baluri, bringing you Match Point, your weekly tennis content. I'll cover ongoing tournaments, have monthly guest discussions, analyze players, and replay the previous week's biggest moments. Be sure to tune into Match Point every Tuesday from 3 to 3.30 p.m. on Blaze Radio. Broadcasting live on Blaze Radio, this is News of the World. We are an international news show that highlights and breaks down all the big events happening around the globe. We go beyond the headlines and map out the bigger picture of world news. On at 7 p.m. every Saturday, only on Blaze Radio. Hi, we're Liv and Maddie. And this is Out of Tune, our specialty show on Blaze Radio. If you like to listen to music, we like to talk about it. Every Tuesday from 11 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Tune in! We were just a couple of poses with guitars They were always out of tune What is a Pathfinder? The United States Army Pathfinders infiltrate denied areas to set up parachute drop zones for follow-on forces. The Pathfinder podcast is a platform to uncover the thoughts and methods military veterans have applied to become Pathfinders in their own right. Here at Arizona State University's The Blaze Radio, I uncover 
how these veterans chose their paths with all the trials and successes along the way. I'm your host, Salty the Sun Devil, and this is the Pathfinder Podcast. Do you like Philadelphia sports? Do you think Sue Opeta is a starting caliber right guard? Does the name Nate Gary bring up bad memories? Is the Philly Fanatic the best mascot in sports? Then you should tune in to Philly Out West on Blaze Radio, the show about all things Philly sports based in Phoenix. Your hosts, Jack Hartsonis and Charlie Limoncelli, cover all the details of Philadelphia sports every Friday night at 8.30 p.m. MST. That's Phillies, Eagles, Sixers, Flyers, and all the latest Philly news and culture. We're bringing Philly, Taylor, Blake Neiman, and Scott Sanduli, along with special guests, as we take you every step of the way to the College World Series. From the Power Five powerhouses, for the third time in the national champions, to the group of five Cinderella's. Coastal Carolina rules the roost, they win the championship. We'll give our insight on the latest happenings in D1 college baseball. So make sure to listen in to Road to Omaha every Sunday night from 8 to 9 p.m. Hello sports fans, with football season behind us, I'm sure you guys are looking for a fun way to fill your Sunday. And if that's the case, Be sure to check out the Scholastic Sports Report live on Blaze Radio every Sunday at 11 a.m. where we take a closer look at some of the value to nominate your coach or player to be on the show. Be sure to reach out at Scholastic Sports Report on Instagram. Are you looking for a new perspective on West Coast sports? Well, I'm here to help you. I'm Jordan Pullett, host of the Specific Sports Show exclusively on BlazeRadioOnline.com. This show is specifically about Pacific Coast sports including the NBA, NFL, NCAA football and basketball, baseball, and more. Tune in every Friday from 11.30 to noon on blazeradioonline.com to start your Friday afternoon and weekend off right. Hello, friends. Is golf your groove? Then, boy, do we have a show for you. Join Peter Bishop, Ian Lonergan, and Owen Castle every Saturday from 3 to 4 p.m. on The Bag Room for your fix of golf's latest news and a little bit of fun. Listen in on blazeradioonline.com, and if you miss a show, feel free to catch up on our Spotify on our channel, The Bag Room. What's up, everyone? It's Jack Footer, a.k.a. J-Fu, and host of The J-Fu Show. Each week on the show, you'll hear a great collection of tunes from the J. Fu theme of the week. The songs will get you moving, grooving, and maybe even singing along, and it's a great way to kickstart your Sunday fun day. So make sure you tune in every Sunday morning from 10 to 11 to the J. Fu Show, right here on Blaze Radio, streaming exclusively at blazeradioonline.com. Jacob, Jacob, Jake, Jacob, Jacob, Jake, Jacob Jones. Jacob Jones. It's a little hot out here. Let's cool off. Woo! Let's go! Splash. Splash. Ben Yates. Yeah. Well, I'm just glad I got you to stop speaking for a minute. That was awesome. The Valley Variety, live every Sunday at noon on Blaze Radio. Welcome to The Voyage. I am your host, Pacey Smith-Garcia. Join me as we travel the world in search of incredible music and venture into some of its more obscure sides. We'll hear the sounds of Senegalese disco, the dream pop of Japan, and so much more. Join me on The Voyage on Sundays at 2 p.m. only on Blaze Radio. Welcome to the land of Faerun the magical world behind Dungeons and Dragons. My name is Anunfak McDaniels, and I'm your dutiful guide, bringing you the lore and legends of Faerun every single week. So unload your equipment and take a seat at the tavern, adventurers, for Traveler's Guide to Faerun, every Wednesday at 7 p.m., only on Blaze Radio. If you'd like to cast your vote for Tribe Talk, tune in Fridays at 2 p.m. The host, Evan Reiser and Daniel Pike, discuss the weekly Survivor episode, season predictions, and the history of the game. Make sure to cast your vote.
news, predictions, rankings, interviews, and more. Tune in to Trip Around the Bases with Cooper, Logan, and David. And Barnes hits right high. Hits it deep. Tune in to Trip Around the Bases every Thursday at 1 p.m. live on Blaze Radio. Hey, did you see that catch Evan Carter made in left field? Who? You know, Evan Carter, the minor league player that got called up by the Rangers. Or what about the up-and-coming Diamondback, Jordan Lawler? Who? Well, let me tell you, this is Minor League's major show where we talk about all things minor league baseball. Up on deck. Every Friday at... 20 minutes to decide our first pack stalled for Oregon, then down the stretch once Dante came back, Arizona stalled out on offense. What do both these teams need to do to get the job done down the stretch here in the semifinal? Well, for Oregon, they have to start hitting their shots. You know, Walker, it's raining outside here at T-Mobile Arena, but inside, it was dry. For no, it's cold in here on the court. <laughs> yes, but they were one of 12 from deep. If they want a chance in this one, they have to start hitting their shots. Because you have to think, they're not getting anything in the interior with the length of Johnson and Balo. So that's recipe number one. And they also have to do a better job rebounding, I think. Uh, Arizona has the rebounding advantage, 22 to 17. You know they have the length. So what do they have to do? They have to win the rebounding advantage and they have to start hitting their shots. Oregon only shot 33% from the floor while Arizona shot 42% in the half but did not make a field goal in the final seven minutes of the first 20 minute frame as we get set to find out who our first finalist is gonna be here in Pac Vegas 2024. And that final stretch shows you just how important Bali Dante is to yep. the Stuck squad, limiting Umar Balo and Krivis inside. For those of you that weren't with us at the beginning of this broadcast in Bali Dante on the very first Arizona possession went up on a pump fake and landed on his back really hard in the first minute of the ball game. Left the court for about 10, a 10 minute stretch, got on the bike, went and got treatment back in the locker room and checked back in after the under eight media timeout. He currently sits at eight points on three for four shooting as Arizona starts the half with the ball. It's Caleb Williams, almost gets it stripped and loses it out of bounds, out of bounds. on the first possession of the game. You gotta love that Walker. Oregon for them. How much fight do they want to have? Their season is on the line. You want to face the top dog in Arizona. Give it all you got. Right out of the gates, I like that. Oregon well outside the bubble up to this point. So really they got to win this tournament to get into the NCAA tournament and standing in their way, the sixth ranked team in the nation. Kuznard on his right side, cross court pass. Finds Evans, goes up strong on the baseline, can't get it, no contact called as he went right into the chest of Balo, who took it away. Boswell brings it up the court, gives it back to Balo at the top of the key, looking for a handoff to Love, gives it to Larson, going to his right side and said, now on the baseline, Johnson, he gets it stripped, two turnovers early, a great bounce pass in transition, and a layup is good from Oregon, specifically Jackson Shellstad gets on the board in this second half. You saw a great job of Oregon picking the pockets quite a few times in that first half, and they Caleb, did it again. Caleb Love drives baseline, can't get the floor to go. Shellstad on the pump fake, drives in, fought about a shot, kicks back out. It'll be Evans at the top of the key, and he'll reset with Kuznard. A minute 15 gone in this second half of play. Oregon is down eight to the Wildcats. Kuznar drives into the paint, throws up a floater. It's good off the right rim, and it falls. An early six to nothing run to start this half for the Ducks. He's been really strong in the pick and roll. We've seen that floater a couple times from him. Pella Larson has it, goes inside the Balo. He's working on Dante, goes up through contact, and they're gonna call a foul on Dante as Balo went right into the arms of the big man. Dante lowered his arms a little bit as Balo was going up. They're going to continue to go inside with Umar Balo. Balo, you know he has the talent and the ability to go with basically anyone in the paint. Dante included. He's one of the best defenders in the conference. But Balo has no fear. Balo does have no fear. Dante. That was only his second personal foul, so not quite in foul trouble. They did get into a little bit of foul trouble in the first half as Balo hits the first free throw. 
more specifically, Jackson Shellstad, the main man in foul trouble as he picked up three towards the end of that first period. So he's out there on thin ice. Balo, a 50% free throw shooter, has 12 points in the game, can't get the second free throw to go. Shellstad gets the rebound and brings it up past the timeline. Ball in his left hand on the right side of the court. A little over 18 to play. Arizona leads by seven. Shellstad still with it. Picked up by Boswell at midcourt. Boswell trying to keep up with him on the right side. Now Dante with the ball off the pass. Kicks out. Shellstad a three. No. Three-point shooting woes still there for Oregon on that possession. Pelle Larson, a no-look pass inside to Johnson. He gets double teamed and blocked by Dante. Great job by Evans and Dante right there, quickly swarming on Johnson, who is quickly ahead. Now, driving inside is Kuznard, goes up strong, can't get it, gets his own board off a of Dante miss. A high rebound is tapped out, another offensive board from Shellstad. And he'll reset with 15 to shoot. That's the key for Oregon. Can they do better on the glass this second half? They've done well so far. That's two second chances now. Shellstad driving, steps back on the baseline, can't get it. Another offensive board. Evans goes up strong and finishes. It's a five-point game. The effort out of the break for Oregon has just been tremendous. They've been really good, especially on the offensive glass. That was three offensive boards on that one possession, not something Arizona gives up often. Caleb Love with the left hand going to his left. Now goes back across the paint. A floater is up and no good. <laughs> but Kwame Evans Jr. tips it back in. Caleb Love. Kuznard motioning Evans to come up to court and not shake his head. A seven point lead for Arizona. Points count for Caleb Love right there. He was the closest one. Kuznard drives in, almost loses it. Goes up through Balo. No call. He gets his own rebound. Kicks out. It's Tracy, drives in, in the corner, Kuznard all day to shoot, you bet! The lead is now four for Arizona. Kuznard. And we're gonna have a whistle as it's brought up the court. 16 and a half to go in this second half. And Oregon has put together some offense we haven't seen almost this entire tournament. It's been impressive to say the least. They've been fast, getting to their spots. And they just have more effort. They're playing with more to lose. They're, they're playing with nothing to lose, excuse me. And they're playing with more fight than Arizona. They've done a really good job coming out here early. Arizona with the ball, up four. We're up 10 at the break. Caleb Lug fakes the pass, drives in. Now Johnson on a cutter, slams it in. Man, can he fly. His nickname is Showtime for a reason. Keyshawn Showtime Johnson shows how much of a highlight reel he can be. Drives across the lane and drops it in with one hand. Arizona goes back up six. Oregon with it with 15 to shoot. Inside the recently checks in carry Oquindo driving Kuznar with the right. Gets it rejected off the glass by Balo. We're going to have a whistle. Going to be Ducks ball out of the break. I think they're going to call a foul on the number one seeded Arizona Wildcats. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8:30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop, a show featuring trending K-Pop songs with prominent artists like BTS, rappers like Jesse, and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-Pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-Pop on blazeradioonline.com on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. My name is Jasmine, and I'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing vs. Everyone. I'm Edward Neiman, host of Boxing vs. Everyone. Tune in Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com for the latest boxing analysis, news, updates, and more.
Lights, camera, action. Whether you're a Broadway pro or a beginner, join us for Broadway 101 every Monday at 12 p.m. to hear some musical hits. Anthony Scarmack and Anna Olp break down a new production every week with music from the stage and facts about the musical's origin and journey. Find us on blazeradioonline.com or our Instagram at Broadway 101 Radio to see what's happening in the wings for our next show. Do you get made fun of for your grandpa music taste? Do you shop vintage? Have you ever been called an old soul? Or maybe you just want some new artists to listen to. If so, check out our show. It's called Can You Dig It? The show where we talk old and new artists alike and the relationship between them. Tune in from 4.30 to 5 every Thursday on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com where, where we, we ask, ask the question, question can, can you dig it? Have you ever wondered about the meaning behind a song? The Ducks giving the Wildcats all they can handle to start this second half have outscored the Cats 9-5 to five here to start this second period of play. Shona, how are they doing it? They're getting it done on the glass, Walker. In this second half, they have a 7-2 advantage on the rebounding battle, and four of those seven are on the offensive glass. Boswell with a little four and a half gone in this second half. Oregon down four. Caleb Love with the left hand dribbles to his left on the right wing. His pass cross court gets stripped away. This time it's Okinda who slams it in. It's a two point game in Las Vegas. Love brings it up. Free throw line, lob shot is no good. I think it was intended for Balo. They're gonna say it went off Balo. Oregon with a chance to tie. 15 to go in this semifinal. Caleb Love now goes to the bench. He has been absolutely silent from this game. It's just been amazing to see what Oregon has done to Arizona's guards. It's just Umar Balo. He hit two threes in the first half and a couple of turnovers here in the second season. To the bench, Tracy has it for Oregon, gives it to Kuznard, and we're gonna have an off-ball foul. It's gonna be a blocking foul on the oh, it's gonna be. They're gonna call it on in Folly Dante. So that's his third foul. They're gonna call it offensive, and it'll be Arizona ball. And now some foul trouble for the big man. Of course, when you're a big man, you always have to be good with fouls. You can't get into foul trouble because you're so important to this team. Follow done a good job. He only has one foul compared to Dante's three. It's Keller Larson at the left elbow. Gives out Johnson, tries a three, hits the bottom of the net. How about it for a big man? Keisha Johnson shoots it 39% from three. No hesitation right there. It's not the most prolific scorer on this team, but he comes up crucial there. Kuznard steps back, gives to Tracy at the top of the key, 15 to shoot. We're gonna have a whistle on the floor. Waiting to hear what it's about. There's a Oregon Duck crouching in a little bit of pain. Can't quite see who it is on the right side. It is Jermaine Kuznard holding his face. Might have taken a forearm to the jaw as he just sits on the ground to take a second while he recovers. We'll take a quick break with him. Arizona up five with 14.22 to go in this semifinal in the Pac-12 tournament. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jazz. Welcome back to Blaze Radio Online. Jermaine Kuznard pops up off the deck and remains in the game, checking in for Oregon. Kwame Evans Jr. will come back in. Actually, Kuznard did exit, but he did come off under his own power. As Oregon has the ball out of the break, 10 to shoot. Dante with the ball on the right wing, dribbles to his right to the corner, can't find a pass. Five to shoot now, looking to back down Balo, but Balo strips him from behind. Boswell comes up with the loose ball. A pull up three in transition is off the back rim. Put back attempt is no good. Tracy with the board for Oregon. 
pushes the pace, switches to the side. On the left side, layup is good. Imperio Okino. That's a great job by Oregon, recognizing they have the five on four advantage with Johnson slow to get back on the other side. Arizona up three with just under 14 to play. A recently checked in, Jaden Bradley has it, gives it to Johnson in the corner, who gives back to Bradley, gets a screen from Balo, goes to his left, tried to give it to Boswell, but couldn't get it stripped away by Okindo. He'll drive with the right hand down the right side, and is fouled going up on the floor. So it'll be ball under the basket for Oregon, as they say Okindo didn't go into his shooting Arizona motion on the drive. Yeah, Okindo has provided a great boost off the bench. She averages Oregon as Jermaine Kuznar is back in the game. Along with Caleb Love for Arizona checks in. Kylan Boswell checks out for Arizona. Jo Jadrian Tracy checks out for Oregon as Kuznar comes back in. The inbound with 25 to shoot goes to the corner and is bailed out as he finds a top, as he finds Shellstad at the top of the key. Now swings to the left side. It's Okindo. Dribbles to his left, goes up on Balo, finishes, can't get it to go, and we're going to have a foul down low. They're going to call it on Caleb Love as it's going to be a foul inside, and I think they're going to call it on the putback. It's going to go on Kishad Johnson. You're right. They called it on Kishad inside on the putback from Dante, so Dante is going to be shooting two shots. 13-18 to go in the ball game. Oregon down three. Make it two as Dante hits the free throw. Dante not known as a very good free throw shooter, but shooting three for five from the stripe with one more to go. Since coming back, he's been extremely effective and now is in double digit points with 10 as he goes two for two on that trip. Right after the free throws, he will check out of the game and get a rest. Entering for him, Mohamedou Diawara comes in. Arizona fans a little antsy in here as they can know Oregon is hanging tough. Only down one, just over 13 minutes to play. A 1-2-2 zone right here for Oregon. It's worked really well, forcing some turnovers. Jaden Bradley with the ball, gives it to Love, who gives it to his left to K.J. Lewis. He goes inside, a wide open Johnson feeds Balo, and he's rejected but fouled. As it was Okindo who came from behind to swat it away, but the official said... He was a little too aggressive, so Bala will be shooting two. That's a great job by the two of them. Johnson on one block and a great wraparound pass because if you're Oregon in that zone, you got, you got to help. You got to help on that zone, and it leaves another guy open. That's why it's so dangerous for Arizona to have two really good big men in Johnson and Balo, and all you can really do is foul him, and it worked out right there as he missed the first free throw. He missed the first one. Balo only one point in this half so far, and we have seven minutes gone in the second half. Second free throw pending. He's one for three in this half. Misses it. He's now two for seven in the ball game from the strike. Kuznard feeling a little bit of full court pressure from Arizona as he brings it up. Gives it to a recently checked in Rigsby. Got it across the timeline, does find Evans to reset. 15 to shoot, hand off to Kuznard. Kuznard has it on the right side, dribbles to his right, steps back a three-point shot goes in! Wow! Jermaine Kuznard creating some offense of his own, and Oregon has the lead. It's the first lead since early in this game. On a 7-0 run, made their last four field goals. Arizona hasn't scored in two and a half minutes. Jaden Bradley. Gives it to Caleb Love, trying to end the drought. Goes in hard, can't get it. Rejected by Diawara. Woo. They're going to call a foul on Diawara, though. That looked clean to me. He might have gotten a little bit of the wrist to Caleb Love, but that'll put Love at the line. I'll tell you what, Jonah. I, even though there have been a couple of fouls down low, the energy Oregon has played with in these first eight minutes has been absolutely stellar. Absolutely. And Arizona is playing with little to no energy. They are committing sloppy mistakes. They're not really getting anything going offensively. And Caleb Love has struggled. He's the team's leading scorer, and he just can't get into any sort of rhythm. Can't even get into a rhythm from the free throw line. An 86% shooter just missed the first one. 
Ball don't lie on that one. He's got another shot at the free throw line. Does get the back of the rim and goes in. It's a one-point game. Oregon leads. Rigsby, Arizona with a little bit of a full court press. Gives it to the left side. It's Evans looking for a way to cross the timeline. Cross court pass to the right side. It was Okindo gives it back to Rigsby. Now swings to the left side. Evans bounce pass to Kuznard on the left wing. He's guarded by Johnson. Looking for a screen from Dante. Asks for everyone to clear out. Drives in on the hesitation. Lays it up. Can't get it to go. Rebound tapped around and finds Kishon Johnson. Love. Thought about a transition three. Looking to drive in. Gives it to a recently checked in Grivas. Now Jaden Bradley on the drive. Goes up strong. Can't finish. Rebound tapped around. Kuznar comes up with the loose ball and gives it to Evans before it goes out of bounds. And Evans will slow it down as he crosses the timeline. Arizona hasn't made a field goal in over three minutes. Oregon is just playing stingy. Love wanted to travel. He kicks out to Kendo. Can't get the three-point shot to fall. Caleb Love comes up with the loose board. Inside, a no-look pass to Johnson. Gets the pump fake up. Rejected by Dante on the putback. But Krivas is in there to clean it up. Good job. Second, third effort right there from the Wildcats. It's a smart timeout. Daniel Altman he knows the crowd starting to heat up. A smart timeout from him to Time quiet him down. Oregon. And with that, we'll take a timeout with the Ducks. Air Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. Featuring trending K-pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-pop on blazeradioonline.com on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. My name is Jasmine, and I'll see you then. Maybe you Arizona favored by double digits or, or currently only leads by one over the number four seeded Oregon Ducks. Arizona looking for a three. To get back into the game, they really need to get their guard play going. Caleb Love has struggled. Pella Larson has also struggled. And I think that's the key for them. Oregon. Currently out rebounding Arizona 11 to 5 in this second half. As it's Kuznar dribbling to the right side with his left arm. He gets fouled on the floor before going up for the shot that goes in. So it'll be a fresh 20. Bradley will single week to hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new fit. Brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop, a show featuring trending K-Pop songs with prominent artists like BTS, rappers like Jessie, and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-pop on blazeradioonline.com on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. My name is Jasmine, and I'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing vs. Everyone. I'm Edward Neiman, host of Boxing vs. Everyone. Tune in Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com for the latest boxing analysis, news, updates, and more. For Broadway 101, every Monday at 12 p.m. to hear some musical hits. Anthony Scarmack and Anna Olp break down a new production every week with music from the stage and facts about the musical's origin and journey. Find us on blazeradioonline.com or our Instagram app. Back in T-Mobile Arena, Wildcats with a slim one-point lead with 10 minutes and 30 seconds to go over the four-seed Oregon Ducks. And Jonah, we're seeing something that Arizona hasn't really shown all year, and that's they're actually being beaten inside by Oregon up to this point. Yeah, Oregon has a 28 to 18 advantage in points in the paint. And Folly Dante and Kwame Evans Jr., they're really getting it done, and they're forcing on the other side the, the paint to be completely clogged. Dumar Balo has been 
very limited here in this second half. Jermaine Kuznard to inbound with a fresh 20. He's got 10 second half points and credit him with the assist off the inbound as Shellstad slips away and gets an easy layup. Oregon retakes the lead 45 to 44. This has just been a Dana Altman masterclass here in this second half. That was their first bucket in two minutes to retake the lead. Caleb Love with the left hand, drives on the left side, kicks to the corner, Bradley, fake shot, goes up strong, loses the ball out of bounds, and they're gonna say it went off his leg. Again, and Fali Dante, his presence in the paint. It's just Caleb Love, every time he drives, he has to kick it out. No clean looks. Jaden Bradley loses it on the drive as well. Oregon just has dogs defensively. Krivas and Bradley will check out. Boswell and Ballo check in. That's the 13th turnover for Arizona in this ballgame. Shellstad hands it off to Oquindo. Gives it to Kuznard. Now on the left side, Tracy goes inside. Dante looking to spin off, almost loses it. Kicks out Shellstad with 15 to shoot. He'll reset, gets a screen. Baseline jumper is good from Shellstad. A four-point swing from him. And that's a three-point lead for Oregon. That is a freshman who's shooting with confidence right there. Just completely rose up and fired away. Matches their largest lead of the game back when it was 5-2 to two early in this ballgame. A cutter inside, Pella Larson tries to dish it off to follow, but a 14th turnover for the Cats. Shellstad will slowly bring it up as he gives it to Kuznard. With 20 to shoot, they'll reset the offense and slow it down. A little over nine to go, Oregon up 47 to 44 over the number six team in the country. Kuznar drives with the left hand, goes baseline, kicks out Shellstad, a heat check three is good! Wow. Jackson. Ducks up six, Jackson. time out, Wildcats. Oregon is just playing in desperation mode. They are shooting the lights out, and it's just been unbelievable to see this Wildcat unit silence. The fans are dead silent. Oregon on a 7-0 run in the past minute and a half. We'll take a quick break with Arizona. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing with growth in the game each and every day. Or of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop. A show featuring trending K-pop songs with prominent artists like BTS, rappers like Jesse, and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-pop on BlazeRadioOnline.com. The true freshman Jackson Shellstad goes on a seven-nothing run by himself and gives Oregon their largest lead of the game with just under nine minutes to play in this Pac-12 semifinal. Arizona with the ball, Pella Larson at the free throw line, picks up his dribble, gives it to Love, who swings it to K.J. Lewis on the right side. He'll drive inside, can't finish, rebound. It's Oquindo, he's played some big minutes down the stretch here, and Chelsad gets the ball to slow it down. It's been a 2-3 zone for Oregon that's just completely clogged up the paint. No clean drives for Arizona. Arizona hasn't scored in two minutes. Oregon has made seven of their last nine shots. A double team in the backcourt broken up by Kuznar. He's got the ball at the free throw line. Goes up to a lob to Shellstad who brings it out with two to shoot. Fires up a shot. It's good! Wow. It's a nine point lead for the Ducks. The Arizona faithful are stunned. Under eight to play. Inside, Ballo goes up strong, loses it, but a foul. They're going to get Kuznard with it. A 10 to nothing run in the last two and a half minutes. Arizona hasn't scored in three minutes. Oregon trying to pull off the upset. We've hit the under eight. We'll be right back. This is Blaze Radio Online. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. 
The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop, a show featuring trending K-pop songs with prominent artists like BTS, rappers like Jesse, and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-pop on blazeradioonline.com on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. My name is Jasmine, and I'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing vs. Everyone. I'm Edward Neiman, host of Boxing vs. Everyone. Tune in Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com for the latest boxing analysis, news, updates, and more. Lights, camera, action. Whether you're a Broadway pro or a beginner, join us for Broadway 101 every Monday at 12 p.m. to hear some musical hits. Anthony Scarmack and Anna Olp break down a new production. Welcome back to T-Mobile Arena where the Oregon Ducks have set fire to this basketball court. Currently on a 10 to nothing run, have made their last four shots from the floor. Meanwhile, the highly favored number six team in the country, number one seed, Arizona Wildcats, have not scored in three minutes. The upset is brewing here in Las Vegas. It'll be Umar Balo at the free throw line out of the media timeout. Under eight minutes to play, Oregon up 53 to 44. The second half performance has just been incredible, both on offense and defense in Oregon. Remember, I said at the beginning of this half, they have to start hitting their threes. They're four of six from deep here in this second half, and a couple of them by Shostad and Kuznard have given them this 10-0 run. Balo with only one point in this second half, making two as he hits the first free throw to cut the lead to eight. That ends a three-minute scoring drought for the Cats. That's just Balo's second point of this half. I mean, he really hasn't even attempted a field goal in this half. Most of those field goals came in the first, where he's five for five. Follow on the second shot, gets it both to go. Cats faithful know how important that is. It's a now a seven-point game. Oregon up three possessions. The Arizona bench rising to let the Tucson faithful know they need the noise. Shellstad has it for Oregon, taking his time. Kuznart goes to the left side to Jadrin Tracy. Back up to Kuznart, 15 to shoot. Dante on the handoff, kick. It's a three from Shellstad, hits the back of the rim and goes in. The true freshman, Jackson Shellstad with ice in his veins. Pelle Larson for Arizona, kicks it out Boswell. On the left side, he gets a screen from Balo. Good denial from Shellstad. Now it's Caleb Love. He'll try a straight on three. Can't get it to go. Rebound to Dante. He's been dead silent in this game. It's a stunner, to say the least. Caleb Love, the Pac-12 player of the year, cannot get going at all. The all-Pac-12 first teamer only has six points on two for eight shooting after hitting two threes in the first half. 15 to shoot, Kuznard with the ball. He'll drive in on Balo, goes up strong, can't get it to go. Dante with the offensive board, goes up strong and finishes. It's a 12 point lead for Oregon with 6.40 to go. Time's not on Arizona's side. They have to get going quickly offensively. Love has the ball, gets a screen from Balo. Goes to the left side, Boswell gets a screen from Balo. He'll drive into the free throw line, kick out Love. He'll try another three off the back rim. Rebound tapped out. Shellstad almost came up with it, but Caleb Love was in the backcourt for it. Goes inside, Johnson now out to Boswell. He'll pull up a three, no good. Three straight misses as it goes out of bounds. It's this zone 
from Oregon that has completely taken Arizona out of its rhythm. I think it, this was a changeup in the second half. Dana Altman went to this zone because we didn't see this in the first half, and Arizona was able to get it inside to Umar Balo where he had the size advantage. But every time someone goes into the paint, they are sending two or more bodies at him, and they're forcing them to shoot these threes, and Arizona it's really it's a good three-point shooting team on the season, but they just can't hit any of them right now. They just missed three on that last possession, and now it seems like they're chucking up desperation threes, Jonah. Oregon up 12 with six to go. UA trying to stay on that one line with a win here. NCAA tournament. Kuznard has the ball for Oregon. Oregon trying to stay alive. Kuznard a three off the back rim, a long rebound is corralled by Bradley, but they're gonna call a foul on him as he shoved Oquindo to the ground. Deck, and that was the sixth foul on Oregon. So that was the last foul to give. He's only four, he's only got four points on one for three shooting, but he hit both free throws he had earlier in this game. Had the free throw stripe to make it an 11-point game on the one and one, gets the first one to go. Bradley. In 18 minutes against USC last night, had 12 points and was perfect from the floor. Four for four shooting, also went four for four from the line. If Arizona is going to come back into this one, they need great guard play. Bradley, Larson, Love. KJ Lewis in the game as well. He goes two for two at the line. It's now a 10 point advantage for Oregon. Arizona's going to bring the pressure in the full court. They inbound it. Tracy, he's out, it almost loses the ball and it goes out of bounds on Johnson as Johnson poked it away. It'll be Ducks ball, 540 remaining. Great full court press here by the Wildcats. Oregon, a long inbounds pass is almost picked off, but they're gonna say it went out of bounds on the out other baseline as KJ Lewis went up like a defensive back and knocked it out. That was a great job by Lewis, just skying to deflect that out of bounds. Oregon has made six of their last eight field goals, 25 on the shot clock, five minutes and 39 seconds on the game clock, up 58 to 48 over the number one seeded Wildcats. Dante gets the inbound in the corner, gives it off to Shellstad at the right wing. He'll back off with Larson on him. Shellstad calls for a clear out. He'll dribble it to the Pac-12 logo at midcourt. 15 to shoot, now 10 to shoot. Shellstad taking his sweet time. Gets a screen from Dante. Dribbles to his right, a fadeaway three-point shot is good! Oh. I cannot believe this performance from Jackson Shellstad. He is automatic from three. No fear from the freshman. 19 points for Jackson Shellstad. Four triples in the ball game. Johnson goes inside and slams it in from the dunker spot. An 11-point advantage for Oregon. Shellstad has it across the timeline, under five to play. Oregon sniffing the upset. Trying to make their first Pac-12 tournament final since 2019. That was the last time they won the tournament. Shellstad, a fadeaway mid-range shot on the heat check, no good. Offensive rebound, Tracy, a couple pump fakes, kicks to the corner, back to Shellstad with a fresh 15, and he'll dribble it up and hand it off to Kuznar. Four and a half minutes to go. Oregon leads 61 to 50. Kuznard, he's working on K.J. Lewis, gets a screen, drives to his right through Balo, goes up strong, can't finish, the putback no good as well. Rebound finds Lewis. He'll push it up on Kuznard. Just over four to play, and we're gonna have a blocking foul call. It looks like K.J. Lewis might have thrown I think a there's a technical out. foul on Oregon. Someone from the bench was not happy with the call. I think that might be a technical. Waiting to hear. They're going to call the foul on Dario Aquindo, who took the block. And you are going to have a technical on the on the floor. Good eye. I said someone, I think it was one of the coaching staff members who got up out of his feet and was yelling. Interesting shot there as Pella Larson will now be at the free throw line for a technical free throw. Larson. Really efficient at the free throw line, shoots 76%. He's been quiet in this one, only six points on two for three shooting, but that make it seven. 
on the technical free throw. He'll have another technical coming. On the blocking foul, Arizona will also get two free throws following these two technicals. A 10-point game on the Larson free throw becomes a nine-point game. Now K.J. Lewis will head to the free throw line. 4-11 to go, Oregon up 61-52. to Lewis, after having what was a really good game against USC yesterday where he had 15 points on 6 for 10 shooting, is at the free throw line for, for a chance to get his first points of the ball game, is 0 for 2 through 35 minutes. And that's not good. They need good bench production. Lewis gets the first free throw to fall at the front end of the 1-1. One one. It's an eight-point lead for Oregon. Whenever K.J. Lewis scores 12 or more points, Arizona is 6-0 on the season. Lewis is such a key part of their bench, and he hasn't been aggressive tonight. He's been in foul trouble as well. K.J. Lewis on the second end, gets it to go. How important is that 4-0 swing going to be down the stretch? An 11-point lead becomes a 7-point lead. Shellstad trapped in the backcourt. He's got a cross, and we're going to have a whistle. Timeout Oregon. Great, great call from Dana Altman to calm his team down with 4.06 remaining. Oregon. We'll keep it here on the floor. But Jonah, I'm not, we're not quite sure who the staffer was that got that technical foul. But that leads to a four-point swing for Arizona. A six to nothing run for Arizona over the past 54 seconds to make it a three possession game. Oregon leads 61 to 54. A ticket to the Pac-12 tournament finals coming up in four minutes. We'll see who it is. This is Plays Radio. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing with growth in the game each and every day. You don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop a show featuring trending K-pop songs with prominent artists like BTS, rappers like Jessie, and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-pop on blazeradioonline.com on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. My name is Jasmine, and I'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing vs. Everyone. I'm Edward Neiman, host of Boxing vs. Everyone. Tune in Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com for the latest boxing analysis, news, updates, and more. Lights. Camera. Action. Whether you're a Broadway pro or a beginner. Join us for Broadway 101 every Monday at 12 p.m. to hear some musical hits. Anthony Scarmack and Anna Olp break down a new production every week with music from the stage and facts about the musical's origin and journey. Find us on... Tommy Lloyd looking to stay perfect in the Pac-12 tournament here in Las Vegas. He's never lost at T-Mobile Arena in the Pac-12 tournament. However, earlier this season, he did lose in Las Vegas against a very talented Florida Atlantic team. That game taking place back in December where UA lost in double overtime, 96 to 95 to FAU. It would be Tommy Lloyd's second loss in this building this year. The first loss in the Pac-12 tournament in his entire three year career here at Arizona. Coming back after the timeout from Oregon, Oregon leads 61 to 54 with 406 to play. This is just not a territory that Arizona is used to having to come from behind. Usually they're the ones who are protecting their lead, they're coasting to victories, but they have to play with desperation. They have to play with guts and make big shots down the stretch. And again, they're doing it without Caleb Love or Kylan Boswell. Tommy I, Lloyd going to his bench here down the stretch of this game. I will say, they were down to Stanford at halftime in McHale Center at one point and did come back to win that game. 
Tracy looking to inbound, has to get in, gets it to Kuznard, full court trap. Kuznard gets it to Tracy, who's able to race across the timeline, under four to play. Oregon up seven, handoff. It's Shellstad. dribbles to his left, across the top of the key at the Pac-12 logo. Looking for a pass, 10 to shoot now. He's picked up by Bradley at the top. Gets a screen from Dante. Dribbles to his left, doubled by Balo. Looking for a bailout, three to shoot. He'll go to the corner. A three-point shot is up, no good. Rebound tapped around, finds Balo. That was J Jadrian Tracy on the shot. Arizona with a chance to cut it to two possessions. K.J. Lewis drives, almost loses it, but holds on. Gives it to Balo, back to Lewis, gets a screen, drives. Across paint with the left hand, looking to go up strong, finding an outlet pass. Pella Larson, a three, no good. Long rebound, finds the hands of Shellstad, who keeps it in bounds to Tracy. Shellstad gets it back, a high arcing pass to Tracy, who crosses the timeline. Just over three to play, Oregon leads 61 to 54. Looking for the upset. Tracy dribbles to his right and is going to be fouled. They're going to say Bradley held him. And you hate to see fouls playing such a factor mm -hmm. down the stretch. Just hope, you know, that they let them play because this is too good of a game to be ruined by the officials. Officials did just call a technical foul. It led to a four-point swing that cut this lead to seven. However, that was only Arizona's fourth team foul, so they still have plenty to give. The side out finds Tracy with 18 to shoot. On the right side, dribbles back to the Vegas Lodo to the top of the key. Hand off Kuznar. Kuznar with 10 to shoot. Pelle Larson guarding him. Gets a screen from Dante. Balo comes up to ice the screen. Goes in. Dante! And it's stripped away. It's KJ Lewis. Now Johnson gives to Larson. A three-point shot in transition is good! Pelle Larson! A four-point game! A nine-nothing run. In the past two and a half minutes, timeout Oregon. It'll be immediate timeout as we get set for the home stretch in this first semifinal of the day. Oregon leads 61 to 57. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop, a show featuring trending K-Pop songs. When it looked like Oregon had all the momentum to close this one out, the Cats stay in it. They are on a nine to nothing run over the past two and a half minutes. Oregon has not scored in the past two minutes and 40 seconds. Initiated by a technical foul that led to four free throws a couple minutes ago and the Cats after being down 12 have cut it to a four point deficit. In the semifinal of the Pac-12 tournament, Oregon leads 61 to 57 with the ball. Inbound, full court pressure. Tracy's got to get it in, finds Kuznard. He's trapped, goes back to Tracy, who races across the timeline to reset it. Two and a half to go, Tracy with the ball. Looking on the right side, Tracy drives in, goes up strong, can't get it, the follow is good from Dante. And Folly, Dante skies and leads it in on the offensive putback. 2.15 to go, Oregon up six. Kishan Johnson goes to the corner for Pelle Larson. Now, K.J. Lewis will drive in, gets his shot rejected by Dante, tapped out of bounds, rebound is saved out of bounds by Kuznard, and Shellstad comes up with it. We've hit the two-minute mark. Oregon trying to upset Arizona, up six. Kuznard is fouled after the handoff. They're going to get K.J. Lewis with it. That's the fifth team foul, Arizona, so Lewis Arizona, and Arizona KJ still have Lewis one more to go before Oregon team. enters the bonus. That's K.J. Lewis's third foul. You have to wonder, foul. is Tommy Lloyd ever going to go back to Caleb Love in this game? Yeah, we really haven't seen him for the past couple of minutes down the stretch. It's been Bradley and Lewis at the guard spots, along with Pelle Larson at the forward. 1.45 to go. Oregon with the ball. Shellstad having the second half of his life. Dribbles to his right, 
Now back at the top of the key, 140 to go, five to shoot, drives in, throws up a floater, it's sent back by Ballo. What a block. Larson gets the rebound, he kicks it. KJ thought about a three, gives it to Bradley, he'll fire a mid-range shot from the elbow, it's good. Back to a four point lead with a minute and a half to go. Tracy gets the inbound to Kuznard, he'll give it back to Tracy, who will dribble it up slowly. Arizona playing a little bit of cat and mouse, trying to get the steal on the full court press. Tracy crosses the timeline and calls timeout. That's the last timeout Oregon has in the game. With Oregon's timeout, we'll take one with them. Up four with a minute 13 to play. Looking for the first spot in the 2024 Pac-12 championship. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop, a show featuring trending K-Pop songs with prominent artists like BTS, rappers like Jesse, and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-Pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be f- It's been an exciting first semifinal here from Las Vegas with Jonah Krell. I'm Walker Smith. Oregon leads 63 to 59. Let me recap how we got here up to this point early in this game. The star Oregon player in Folly Dante hit the floor and went down hard on the first possession of the game. Arizona took advantage and went up by 14 at one point in that first half. Dante came back into the game, helped Oregon down the stretch, cut it to a 10 point lead at halftime. Out of halftime, Oregon came out firing and cut the lead down and eventually took the lead with about 12 minutes to go in this second half behind an incredible performance from Jackson Shellstad, the freshman who has 15 second half points along with the second leading scorer, Kuznard, who has 13 himself. Oregon with the ball up four with 113 to go. They inbound it. It's Dante hounded by Balo and Balo is gonna foul him. That's only that's the last foul Oregon has to give, so that won't send Dante to the free throw line. But however, you wonder if they're gonna leave Dante open and maybe foul him on this next possession if he gets the ball. Oregon sitting at eight fouls. That was Arizona's six. 109 to play. Oregon up four. Dante gets the inbound. Amelia gives it to Tracy. Now over to Shellstad. We've hit a minute to go. High pass to Tracy. 12 to shoot. One minute on the on the game clock, Oregon up four. Tracy dribbling to his right at the logo. Hands off to Kuznard, four to shoot. He's gonna have to step up, fires a shot. It's off the front rim, rebound tapped around. Tracy almost comes up with it, but it goes out of bounds. Wildcat ball with 47.6 on the clock. Not a good possession by Oregon right there. Everything along the perimeter. And look who checks, checks back in for the crunch possessions, Caleb Love. Checks in for K.J. Lewis. Love has been completely silent this second half. Only three points on one for four shooting. He's the team's closer. Tommy Lloyd always calls him a winner, and he needs him right here in this big moment. Kishad Johnson will inbound the ball for Arizona. Oregon has outscored Arizona 40 to 26 in the second half. Jaden Bradley with the ball, brings it across the timeline. Caleb Love fires a three-point shot. It's off to the right side, out of bounds. Caleb Larson tries to save it. Bodies hit the deck as Tracy saves it. Bodies on the floor again. They don't have a timeout. Oregon does not have a timeout, waiting for a call. No call yet from the officials. Ducks ball. It's going to be Ducks ball as they call the jump ball. The possession arrow favored the Ducks. Waiting for the, we still don't have an official call yet. Waiting to hear from it. They whistle for someone to come clean up the side of the court where the bodies hit the floor. Oregon's gonna get it side out. It went out of bounds actually. They're gonna call it out of bounds off Arizona. So it'll be Jermaine Kuznar to inbound. 1.8 second difference between shot clock and game clock. Oregon leads by four. They can sniff the Pac-12 final. 
Tony Padilla is still at the scores table looking things over. Maybe they're looking over the clock, how much time is left. They may be looking to see when the ball went out of bounds. All the officials haven't gone over for an official review, so we're still waiting. We'll reset you real quick with 31.8 seconds left on the clock. Both teams are going to go to their benches. Oregon leads 63-59 to after being down 10 points at halftime against the number six team in the country, and we're going to take an official review. But both teams are already going to go back onto the court. Officials, a really quick review, just making sure the clock was all set. Actually, they were checking the shot clock. They move it from 30 to 25 seconds, so now a 6.8 second difference between shot and game clock. Cario Oquindo will check into the game. Arizona Actually, has excuse to. Excuse me, it's Kwame Evans who comes in to inbound. Arizona has to look for a quick steal, and if you don't get it, you got you to gotta foul. We are getting in foul territory. Oregon up two possessions with that about seven point or about seven second difference between the shot and game clock. Not a whole lot of time unless they get the steal off of this inbound. A really important inbound. Balo not in the game guarding the inbounder. It'll be Kashad Johnson standing in front of Evans. Out there with them, it's Bradley, Love, Larson, and KJ Lewis. As we're still waiting for an official review, neither team really understands exactly what's going on. The officials pointing to the shot clock. This entire sequence has been a little weird. They add another, okay, so now they're adding seconds onto the shot clock. So instead of 31.6, they make it 32.6 seconds on the game clock and 26 seconds on the shot clock. So they just wanted to make sure the shot, the both clocks were right. Very important down the stretch. Call on the floor was that Johnson, while trying to tie up the basketball, stepped out of bounds. They're able to, Oregon's able to inbound to Shellstab, looking across the timeline, does. He's hounded by Lewis and intentionally fouled, so Shellstad will go to the line. Shellstad is just so quick. He really is. He was able to get past KJ Lewis. Lewis was trying to cut him off on that drive and force him to switch sides, but he was able to get past him with that speed. Shellstad to the line. Shellstad having arguably the game of his college career, his young college career, the true freshman, has 19 points on 7 for 16 shooting. First free throw is up and good. He's about the surest thing on this Oregon roster. He's an 84.2% free throw shooter, increases the lead to five with one more free throw coming. Shot clock is turned off. 26.7 seconds left Shellstad as Shellstad increases his point total to 21 and the lead to six. No shot clock. Caleb Love with the ball, hands it off to Larson. He'll pull up a three with Shellstad in his face. Doesn't hit anything but the backboard. Rebound falls to Oregon and a foul is called. Cario Kindo came down with the ball and the Oregon Ducks can feel it. The Oregon faithful getting loud. The Tucson faithful silenced, as that might just be it. If Oquindo can hit these free throws, it'll make it a three possession game with 15.5 seconds remaining. Johnson, I'll tell you what, Jonah. Arizona coming into this game, double digit Oquindo favorites. In folly, Dante goes to the floor hard. This is about 10 minutes of that first half. You and I both looked at each other and thought this one might be over as Okindo does the job and hits the first free throw. And now it's a three possession game. This is not uncommon territory for Altman's crew. They beat Kansas in the Elite Eight on a neutral floor with a large opposition fan base as Caleb Love pulls up a three point shot. No good, rebound tapped around. Kuznard's not gonna be fouled. He's gonna dribble it across. Three seconds, two seconds, one. And that'll do it. The Oregon Ducks upset number six Arizona to move to the Pac-12 championship final. Your final score, Oregon 67, Arizona 59. Unbelievable. A complete stunner. The second half was completely taken over. Arizona and their big stars, Balo and Love, were neutralized. They had no offensive rhythm. A 42 to 26 
advantage in the second half for Oregon. And they really did it on the backs of three players. Only 12 points came either outside of the three, Dante, Shellstad, and Kuznard. They just made huge buckets down the stretch of this game. And they wanted it more than Arizona. They played with more desperation and fight. Another feather in the cap of Dana Altman's incredible career at Oregon. One of the biggest upsets in this conference tournament week. And that might knock Arizona off that NCAA tournament. With Green and yellow in, here in T-Mobile Arena. They will the move on to the championship game in 2024. Against the winner of our and Dana Altman game, always gets his squad to play in March. He's the winningest coach in Pac-12 tournament history. This is his 24th win. And every time he's in Vegas, he makes something happen. He makes it interesting. This is a team that has faced so many obstacles with injuries. They lost guys like Nate Biddle and Keyshawn Bartholomew and Mookie Cook out for the season with injuries. And this team just kept fighting on the backs of Jermaine Kuznard and, and Folly Dante. What an incredible effort. What an incredible effort indeed. And that's not it here from Las Vegas after an incredible first game. We still have one more to go. It'll be number two seeded Washington State taking on the number three seeded Colorado in what looks to be another thriller here in T-Mobile Arena. But that'll do it for us here in our first game. For Jonah Krell and Kevin Mulater, I'm Walker Smith with Kevin. I'll be on the call for the next game of the semifinal. Oregon upsets Arizona 67 to 59. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing with growth in the game each and every day. You don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine.